I am your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be here as we are every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, for the next two hours. This happens more and more uh, when I'm about to start a broadcast that I just try to focus as much as I can to cover every bit of news and information we have and to try to lay it all out as best we can understand uh, exactly what's happening. I got here three hours before the show today. And I prepared for the broadcast basically for about four hours before that at home. And I think I'm almost like a race car driver or something that goes out and does a bunch of laps and almost practices too much beforehand. Now, you know, some days I come in here 30 minutes for the show and don't do a lot of preparation because I've already know what I want to talk about. Uh, but when it gets into a subject like Benghazi, or it gets into a subject uh, like the NSA, or a subject like Obamacare, or a subject like immigration reform, I start studying the subject and then get so much knowledge, it, it's, it's, it's hard to put it all out, uh, out there. But I'm going to try to go over it all today. I think the most uh, amazing facet of it, and, and what kind of dumbfounds me personally, is that it's 100% fact that the White House, Obama, the State Department, the CIA, the Pentagon, ordered a stand down and sat there and waited 14 hours to get people on the ground, and it took them over six hours to overrun uh, the embassy substation arms cache uh, and kill the people inside. It was the front office of a large warehouse complex out back uh, with thousands of heat-seeking missiles, anti-aircraft guns, uh, rocket launchers, so both small, medium, and some heavy arms. And I've spent the last day going back and digging up the Colonel Schaefer interviews the Wayne Madsen interviews, the Dr. Steve Pachenik interviews, where they all laid out in the days, weeks, and months after. Going back 10 months ago to September 11th last year, in, within just a few days and then weeks and months, they laid it all out that their sources said there was a stand down ordered by Obama that there was a arms, giant arms cache there with the ambassador from Turkey being there and that it was being transferred to Syria and that the Benghazi security force had been uh, ordered to basically go over and kill the ambassador and everybody inside by an unnamed group, who do you think pays them, the White House, to get rid of witnesses so they could uh, basically have plausible deniability later and say, oh my gosh, Al-Qaeda got all these missiles, we've got to take your rights away. They've got thousands of missiles crippling Europe and the U.S. We've got to set checkpoints up everywhere and take all your rights and have the TSA, you know, stick your, uh, their hands down your pants everywhere because of Al-Qaeda. We laid all that out with our guests and our sources who weren't speculating. They were told this by their CIA, FBI. Defense Department, State Department sources. And then I went back last night, this morning, today, and I watched these hour-long interviews with Wayne Madsen, Colonel Schaefer, Pachinik, Dr. Pachinik, and it was all exactly accurate. Then I even found Kudlow reports a month after we broke it with their witnesses saying the same thing on CNBC. So all this big news coming out, because now CNN's reporting the same thing we've been saying in the last few days, is that we've caught them red-handed. There's no mystery to Benghazi. We're gonna break all that down when we come back. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. It is the fourth day of August, 2013. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have solved the Benghazi mystery, and we solved it. We solved it nine months ago, just a few weeks after the September 11th attack on the embassy substation that killed Ambassador Stevens and other CIA State Department personnel. And we on record with an NSA whistleblower, Wayne Madsen, with the former head of State Department Psychological Warfare, Dr. Steve Pachinik, with the former head of major operations in black ops, Colonel Tony Schaefer, and other guests we had on. And up on Infowars.com right now, we have the confirmed Benghazi was cover-up of arms transfer to Al-Qaeda by Kurt Nemo and yours truly, Alex Jones. And we worked yesterday and today on this article that has, from September of last year and October and November, seven different links, three of them posted, video interviews slash radio with Colonel Schaefer, Wayne Madsen, Dr. Steve Pachanek, on the show first on our broadcast, breaking down exactly what happened at Benghazi. And ladies and gentlemen, if I knew this a few days and a few weeks after the entire government in the State Department, the FBI, the CIA, the Defense Department, NATO, they all know. There was two Predator drones over. There was a C-130. It took them 14 hours to get personnel there. They stood down for over six hours to let them be killed. That is a premeditated, deliberate stand down. And we have a Congresswoman who is a former ambassador saying only the president could order a stand down of something of that magnitude on a State Department facility. And that's what went on. That's what happened. Congresswoman Obama gave Benghazi stand down order. And we're going to be going over Ann Wagner's comments, the Congresswoman, on that as well. So the point is, is that you've got all this other incredibly important news. We're going to get to that in the second hour. We've got NSA whistleblower and Navy veteran Wayne Madsen joining us at the bottom of the hour to go over this. But if you want to go to Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com and click on the top red link story, confirm Benghazi was cover-up of arms transferred to Al-Qaeda, you will see my guest with their sources in the Pentagon, the State Department, the NSA, the CIA, and NATO. Madsen had just been in Libya right before that happened, by the way. He actually goes to these places. Rise for some of the biggest publications in the country. They all laid it out. Three different guests, and I had some others on as well, but they were speculating. These guys all had sources that said the same thing. And by the way, when Colonel Schaefer was on the broadcast, he ran Stratus Ivy and other major programs, could have killed bin Laden twice in order to stand down in 2000 and 2001, testify the 9-11 hearings. He was called in and threatened because he teaches at the Army War College and, 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 and also runs some other think tanks and is, a, and is also a contributor to Fox News. But he was called in and threatened when he came on my show and said that and couldn't come on for like six, seven months after that happened and is only now able to come on the show. I mean, it was a total freak out when he came on and said what he said. And what did he say? Heat-seeking missiles were transferred out of three giant warehouses you can look at the Google Maps of this that were controlled by that building behind it, filled with all of these heavy, medium, and light weapons. We're talking thousands of over 10,000 heat-seeking missiles missing in Libya. Several thousand. I also talked off record to an Air Force colonel. To an Air Force colonel here in Austin, Texas. I'll just leave it at that. I talked to an Air Force colonel in person that said, yes, they got most of the 10,000 heat-seeking missiles, and there were thousands in that building alone. And you had the Turkish ambassador, the foreign minister, there meeting hours before. My guest broke that. 
months and months before it was in the news. And, and if you just tuned in, what am I getting at here? CNN Thursday night came out, and we're going to play clips of this after the break. CNN came out and said, oh, we're breaking that there were 35 CIA operatives in warehouses behind the building and that there were missiles and heat-seeking missiles in there. Now, we broke this here, okay? And I don't want the credit. I just want people to understand, we don't make stuff up. I told you a year and a half ago, right after the Navy SEALs, 20 plus, was it 23 Navy SEALs, blew up on a Chinook aircraft in a fake mission and then were attacked once they hit the ground, that I talked to a Navy SEAL who's a friend of the family for one of my dad's friends. He's friends with his father. We've known him for over a decade. You know, enough to come over and, you know, barbecues at my parents' house. And they said, no, no, um, yeah, he's in another SEAL team. I'm not going to say the SEAL team. But that everybody that they talked to in SEAL Team 6 knows there was a bomb on the helicopter. And it was a setup. Well, I told you that over a year ago. Now that's Fox News. That's Associated Press. Since Michael Savage had some of the families on saying it two weeks ago. And then that forced them to cover it. And we're in contact with the families as well. But they've been scared to come on so far. These are actual families that lost family, not not the SEAL I knew, who an active duty who has friends in SEAL Team 6. I don't make stuff up, you understand? And I know real information when I get it. We broke the uh, Homeland Security documents saying veterans and gun owners and Tea Party people are the main terror threat. Remember that four years ago? People didn't believe it at first. We just continue to break bombshell after bombshell. So understand, I'm working seven days a week. I'll be honest, I can't even be home now with my wife and children. They're so innocent, they're so good. I just think, my God, they're not safe if I don't go fight this. I cannot, I don't even go home basically anymore. Because when I'm there, all I'm thinking about is this and fighting it. That's how real this is, ladies and gentlemen. That's how in the game for this republic and freedom I am. And I don't know where the other talk show host and people are. You think you're just going to play games with the New World Order? You're going to play games with the co corrupt corporate mafias that have taken over our government? You think any of you are going to have a future? You think your bank accounts, your pension funds, your jobs are safe? Nobody's safe until we wake up as a country and get our nation back on track. We've never been perfect, folks, but we've never been this corrupt and this overrun by special interest. And, and, and corrupt forces have never, never gotten away with things at this magnitude. You think I'm happy that we were all proven right from 10 months ago, nine and a half months ago? I guess it was about nine months, nine and a half months ago. We, we, we broke this. And I sat there on Thursday and Friday going, didn't we report this first? And I went and looked at it Friday and I looked at it Saturday. I'm like, Infowars.com and my contacts and who we had on the air, we broke that. And then we're so forward looking, fighting the next globalist threat, the next authoritarian wave, that, 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 that we weren't even going to report on the fact that we broke all this. And then, weeks after we broke all this, credit where it's due, the Kudlow report, that i got to be honest, that show continues to actually tell the truth on so many issues. Like when the foreign banks brag they've conquered us, they show the headline. Or when they admit that foreign banks are stealing trillions, uh, they report on it. They report it. We're going to play that clip that it was an arms deal. But the whole issue here is, there's no debate there was a standout. The only question is, do they go, oh, it's embarrassing that our Al-Qaeda buddies are killing people. Let's just say it was from a movie and, and whitewash it. Or did they send them in to kill them so that there's dead men tell no tales of why Al-Qaeda was given thousands of missiles, which the system is going to use then as a threat against the West to take all of our liberties. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. 
And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. So here's the issue. And you can go up to InfoWars.com, see our article with the YouTube stamped, because we're also a TV show, not just radio, YouTube stamped uploads from a week after the September 11th attack in Benghazi last year, uh, two weeks after, three weeks after, a month after, two months after, laying it out first, everything that happened in Benghazi. And why is that important? Well, the next media outlet that I saw to tell the truth from their sources was the November 11th program on CNBC, the Cudlow Report, with John Batchelor, who I continue to see tell the truth. I mean, you got to give credit where credit's due, and he may... I can't vouch for him on every subject. I don't watch it routinely. I just continue to see clips where that guy, you know, was getting accurate information. And I wish this wasn't true. I wish it was just a group of out-of-control jihadis that went and killed some people. I wouldn't be happy about that, but it's a lot less scary than, well, wait a minute. My, my sources said that they hired several hundred local Al-Qaeda militia, the same ones that they put in charge in Benghazi when they used that as a base of operations against Gaddafi, NATO, Obama, the globalist. And Congress had some issues with that, obviously, arming al-Qaeda there. And then they were using it to arm out of uh, uh, Libya the weapons left over from that war and Gaddafi stockpiles that were pretty high-tech, including British, U.S., and French-made missiles, heat seekers, to then give those to al-Qaeda, that is the main force, attacking Assad in Syria, to then turn that country over to al-Qaeda. And again, I've been telling you this for over two years. Now it's mainstream news that, yes, al-Qaeda makes up over 60% of the main fighters against Assad. Again, showing that our so-called government is using these people to destabilize the world and as a pretext to take our liberties. And I'm going to explain how this works in a moment. But this is a big deal that this has now been confirmed because you have Colonel Schaefer and Wayne Madsen coming up in the next segment. And Dr. Pachinik and all these government sources we have, and an Air Force colonel separately that I talked to off record, just a month after it, uh, it happened, all confirmed what is just widely known. The Air Force colonel said it is widely known. Anybody with an intelligence clearance knows it because it was, it was, it was in situation rooms in the Pentagon, situation rooms in Langley, Virginia, at the CIA, the NSA, on the aircraft carriers, the Mediterranean, at the NATO headquarters. They all had feeds of it happening in high def from the predators. And he said he talked to people that were on duty and witnessed it. And, I mean, and people sat there as it played out hour after hour. It's one thing if you drop a missile and then a kid walks outside the, you know, the hut, you go, oh my gosh, we killed a kid. It's another, th it's another thing to sit there and watch people killed and, and, and fighting back hour after hour and being ordered to stand down. And then to see it all lied about in the media. That's why Benghazi is so dangerous for the Obamanoids. And, and so there was a stand down. The security that they hired to run Benghazi was the group, we have their name, the list, all of it that went and did the killing. But they had inside knowledge of how to attack a facility. That's now come out. Everything we were told came out later to be confirmed. And now CNN and the London Telegraph and AP and others are saying, yes, we've talked to CIA people. They're being given monthly polygraphs, something that's usually done every two years, to find out if they're talking to the media to cover up what's happening, and these people are so mad about what happened, they tell us it was an arms deal, and it was missiles and heat-seeking missiles. I, I mean, boom. That's Jack Tapper reporting that. So let's go to a small clip from that full report that we have linked up on InfoWars.com. Nine-plus months after we told you first, again, we know what we're talking about. This has now come out, and the bigger issue is, if we know, if Alex Jones knows, if my guests know, the whole system knows, okay? So this is not a mystery to people in government. This is not a mystery to the media whores.
Ladies and gentlemen, we know they're the warehouses. We were told by just, I mean, the guy that co-wrote Tom Clancy's books, for heaven's sakes. That's how high up Dr. Pachanik is. Former head of black ops, psych warfare, basically for the whole government, that that happened within weeks of it going on. Well, actually, it was on days after. Uh, then I had him on earlier this year. Then we, uh, again, had all these other witnesses on. Colonel Schaefer, Wayne Madsen, who's coming up in the next segment. Now, let's give credit where credit's due. Weeks after we break this, CNBC, Benghazi is not about Libya. It's about the NSC operation, exactly what Pachinik said, moving weapons into Turkey to Al-Qaeda out of Libya. It's going to uh, unravel like crazy. And when we were covering this 10 months ago, 9 months ago, we were the conspiracy theorists. I mean, these are real guests, real people that have proven accurate over and over and over again. The mainstream media most of the time is trying to lie to you and keep you in the dark, folks. Everybody knows the truth who isn't completely stupid. Just most people in the system play along with the lie. All right, when we come back, we're going to get Wayne Madsen. He formerly uh, worked in one of the security details over the NSA, now known as the Q Group. That's the people that keep the secret secret. He's going to be coming on with us to break down um, now nine months uh, after he broke all this here. Uh, any other details we have and ask what does it mean that all this is now beginning to come out? Has the dam broke on Benghazi? Will it bring down Obama?